Welcome back to Pokemon After Dark Rye. My name is Brett, and joining me this this uh, week is Wes. Wes, say hi. What's up? So Wes, how you been? Good. Just playing Pokemon. Yeah, as our senior Pokemon, Pokemon Let's Go correspondent, can you please fill people in what you're currently doing in the game? Dreading life, hunting shinies. You caught five hundred. How, how many Vulpix did you caught again? Catch again? I'm, I'm in the five fifties right now on, the, on my catch combo. On the Vulpix is trying to get a shiny Vulpix. And you haven't even seen one yet. Yeah, and that's not even that's not even counting the the hundreds I've missed just doing the spawn trick, running in and out of the map. So. What are you gonna do if you finally see the uh, the shiny Vulpix and then it runs? It ain't gonna run because I'm not gonna let it. <laughs> or if it runs, I'd probably quit the game. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Vulpix is not that hard to catch. Well, I know you've been looking for a Growth for a long time, and Jasmine found you one on Go to send to you. Yes, and I'm. Yeah, and I'm ecstatic about it. Unless I get it first. Yeah, you ain't getting it. <laughs> well, everybody, just a quick rundown on this show. This is Pokemon After Dark Rye, where we get down and dirty talking about Pokemon. And every episode, we randomly select a Pokemon from the National Pokedex list from numbers Uno through whatever Spanish is for 809, I think it is. I think that's not including Meltan and Melmetal, but I think I'm going to start including them because I'm pretty sure their number is officially established as whatever it is. So, but first, you know, let's, you know, we're talking about a little bit of our Pokey adventures since the last episode. There was a December Community Day. Basically, all the Community Day Pokemon rolled up in the one. We had, we all went to our, our, local hangout spot for that and had a good time catching stuff. Wes, uh, we did okay getting shinies. Who was it in our group that got just a, a shiny of like everything? Was it Jasmine? Yeah, Jasmine got quite a bit. She didn't get the Charmander though. No, she, well, she at least saw the Charmander and it ran from her after the first ball. Yeah. 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 Gotta, gotta bury those sh shinies. You can take no chances. Especially when they're as finicky as Charmander. Seems like all the fire starters are like just are just a pain in the ass to catch. All, all, all starters like to run after the first ball. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have well, especially it seems like the fire ones because I haven't had nearly as much of a problem with the grass or water starters. Maybe Piplup, but I just don't see hardly any Piplups like at all. I've used a lot. I've used a lot on Bulbasaur because he uses his little vine whip thingy to catch your ball, and he does it over and over and over. Yeah. I haven't had nearly that that problem with no, Bulbasaur. Wait, wait I think a it's a case balls. case by case sort of thing. Um, my catch of the past month or so. Let's see. I evolved a Lucky Chansey into a Blissey. Very happy about that. Check that out on our Twitter, guys. Uh, let's see. Shiny. Uh, we evolved a, or I evolved a shiny Tyranitar. Did you get one of those? Yes, I did, and I evolved it also. Yeah, sweet. I actually end up, now I have three Tyranitars. Should be helpful for raids and stuff. Also got, I think, two more Metagross in there. And the Meteor Mash move is just so awesome. Also, blah, 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 blah. A couple more of the starters, a Venus, a Venusaur. Got a 
another Blastoise and another uh, Char uh, blah, 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 Charizard. I can't talk. I'm, I'm struggling to, to coalesce my thoughts into words. But um, it was a it was a fun community day. The weather warmed up a little bit, thankfully. I think for January we're gonna end up just driving around because it's gonna be cold, and I do not want to walk walk up and down the street when it's that that cold. But. Last, let's see. Did we do any raids? Oh yeah, we did do a raid. We caught, we both, we all got Cresselias. We did. We had several of those. My miss, though, like the Pokemon I really missed out on that I kicking myself over is the second Cresselia, because we did three Cresselia raids, and on the second one, uh, a guy we know was running a little behind, and we were all in like the actual battle fighting Cresselia, and he's like, "Oh, we can just all back out." Because we, you know, you only need to use the the uh, pass once, and then everybody can quit and then rejoin into a different group, and it's fine as long as there's still t uh, time on the clock on the the timer, right? So I thought everyone was going to do that. I backed all the way out. Nobody else backed out, so everybody else beat Cresselia except for me and the other guy, and we're just like just shit out of luck. So. That sucked for me. The problem was is you already caught one where a bunch of other people missed the first one because it ran. Right. That's why I wasn't super upset about it because I did catch the first, the first we one. We did not want to risk not getting the Cresselia at all. Yeah. The second time I did catch... Well, I did catch that Cresselia for somebody else on their account, so I was, I was able to help somebody. Did, and then we did a third one, so when I mean, we had three chances. and Some got three, some got two, some got one. I got one. But really, I got. I only had the chance to get two, so. Oh well, not a huge deal. Cresselia is not exactly gonna be in the meta for really anything. She's just not quite strong enough, and there's better options for psychic Pokemon. You know, Mewtwo comes uh, and to mind. You really, and you can't, and you really don't have enough candies to power up unless you did a lot of the raids. Yeah, and it's all, like, again, even a fully power up one's not gonna be that particularly useful and had a good amount of stardust yeah um there was there was a guy at that first raid that, that caught a his first cresselia raid and he caught 100 percent cresselia he's like i'm done i don't need to do anymore so yeah. good for him but overall she's a just a nice little pokedex filler we missed out on giratini but i'm sure we'll get a chance for him in a future uh research Speaking of which, they took the frickin' Sinnoh Stones out of the research breakthroughs. Or, not entirely, but now there's just a random chance of getting one. And naturally, I did not get one the last time I did one. Gonna be getting another one tomorrow, so cross your fingers. But Really hate that, but then it turns out that it, you can win evolutionary items when you do trainer battles. So, I imagine that Sinnoh Stones will be a part of that prize pool there, so... Which, uh, Wes, did you see that, that update went live? No, I didn't. I hadn't. Wait, you sure it went live? Well, they did. They haven't turned it on, but the update is there. No. Yeah, because I read all their words were going to announce information about it, mm -hmm. and that it might be live in Japan soon. Before yeah. That. Well, the last update had trainer battles listed as part of the update, so I was really excited yeah. about that, but then a little disappointed that it wasn't turned on yet. But it's coming real soon. Try to get those ultra and best friend meters way up on a lot of people. I got a friend in the Czech Republic that I really want to fight, just just to fight. So be really cool. Hopefully they can make it compelling. I'm not sure if a lot of people want to tap like a million times to trainer battle each other, but and that does seem to like the route they're going. They're making it to where you can get a third charge move. Like you, I'm just curious. What it's going to cost? There's, there's going to be some cost associated with doing these trainer battles, and you know it. Sure. And Hopefully, it's not what, Stardust. What God, I hope it's not Stardust. Stardust is such a. I know uh, there's a lot of high level players that have no issues with Stardust, but like for some reason, I can never just hold on to it. For yeah. Me. Mostly trades, trading, doing special trades. It just murders at Stardust. But hopefully, it's not Stardust. Um, I know. That with the trainer battles, they, they got, you know, you got your two moves, and then you can have a, get a third charge move, and you have to use, an, from what I understand, an evolutionary item to obtain that third move. So I'm not sure what that means. 
Like, hopefully, God, I hope it's like, oh, you need a Sinnoh Stone to, to unlock a third move. Because it's already a pain in the ass now that they're randomized to get them. Unless they're easy to get from the battles. But somehow, I kind of doubt it. Right? I, I think it might work like how they did raids, where you're going to get so many free passes. Mm -hmm. And after the free passes, because they're going to have a real money grab in it at some, that, somewhere. That really but, sucks. I hope they don't do passes either, because I don't want to be restricted to just a handful of trainer battles a day. Like, that would suck. And I also don't want to have to go to a gym or a Pokestop. I mean, I do go to, like, one of those a day, but I don't want to have to go, you know, out of my way to get something you know, so There's going to be a real money grab with it so, somehow. They wouldn't do it otherwise. Well, at least let me battle my Ultra and best friends free of charge. Even if I don't get anything out of it, like, that's fine. I just want to fight people. Yep. Yeah. I, th I think that, and they might do it that way, because I think they're going to have, they're going to have trainer battle, like, events, and then you'll have pers maybe personal battles, too, where you can challenge your friends personally. Mm-hmm. Or you get random group ups too, random matches. Well, no, I you don't can. Know. Well, you can actually go up to a stranger on the street, and you can scan their whatever that code is, that QR code I think is what it is, and uh, add them as like a friend or whatever. I'm not sure if it adds them as a friend or if it just makes it to where you two can fight. And you have to be within a close proximity to one another as well. Yeah. But ultra and best friends uh, can battle anywhere in the world. At any time, regardless of the distance. So that's why you want to get that friendship up. Um, Did I break this combo? Are you playing right now? Yeah. <laughs> You're not playing if you broke that combo. No, I think I just broke my combo when I wasn't even, I was on autopilot. Oh, no, Wes. The agony. Okay, no, no, I didn't. Oh, okay. Keep us up there. I ran into a random encounter, and it didn't show me my catch combo at the top left of my screen. But it was it was a battle that wasn't in the catch combo, so it was a ratata. So it wouldn't show the catch combo of the Pokemon since it wasn't my catch combo Pokemon. So I'm okay. I'm okay. just scaring myself. <laughs> um, it's a scary show. Hopefully, those ev uh, when it says you need evolutionary items to unlock the third charge move, hopefully it's anyone, or at least it includes some of the older evolutionary items, because I got a bunch of them. Like, really? I'm not going to use Upgrade a whole lot. Like, I've used two on Porygon. Like, I'm probably never going to do it again. Cause like, and I got, like, I keep, like, a nice stock of five or six of each one hanging around. Now, obviously, yeah. I want, want as many as I can to kind of prep, so. Anyway, that's been our... What's that? I wish it had. I wish it had a forgiveness system to where, like, if you missed a day from, the, like, going to a pokey stop. No. It wouldn't break the combo. I really wish it did because sometimes it's just hard to do. Well, I think this game was definitely designed for major cities, metrop metropolitan areas, and we're kind of in a rural setting. So we, still, we do have plenty of pokey stops around, but not... Not quite as many as, like, when we were in Atlanta or st places like that. But I don't know why you're complaining. You got a Pokestop, like, right by your house. Yeah, but still, it's... You have to go outside to get it. Oh, no. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you get busy and then you don't have time to stop or go around. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. For sure. Oh, Wes, what do you say we pick a Pokemon for this episode? Let's go for it. Let's do it! Uh, let's see. Numero 551... Let me just see who that is. Care to take a guess? Care to take a guess, Wes? I'm guessing it's the the one we did last week. No, no. If it landed on a number that we've already done, then 
I just will just hit the generate button again. Final Fantasy Fifty One. I'm gonna say that's probably a generation what generation five. I would say. Is it Gen five? I'm looking at it right now. You're absolutely maybe, right. That is Gen five. Maybe maybe a. Uh, I'm going probably it's probably low low numbers in Gen five. Let's so play probably a starter. Probably a what? A starter Pokemon for Gen Five. Mm, let's play. Get. Let's play. Who's that Pokemon? Wes, I'm gonna give you some clues, and you tell me what it is. Okay. All right. This is a dual type Pokemon introduced in the previously mentioned Generation Five. It does evolve once, and it does so. Oh no, it evolves twice. Pardon me. Once at level 29, and once at 40. So it's got two evolutions, so three total forms, and this is the base form of it. Its abilities uh, are either Intimidate or Moxie, Anger Point, or Hidden Ability. It is a short quadruped. It's got a long face, and it's got a tail. It's mostly light brown, but it's got some black stripes. Um, I don't know. Its eyeballs kind of look like sunglasses. If I really you, don't know. If you were in the Nile... You may be in denial. No, if you are in the Nile, you might be afraid of it. Totodile? No, close. I wouldn't be sure. Close. I'll give you some. It's a ground and dark type. Uh, Found in Unova. Unova. It's also it's also in you know Alola apparently. Um, Let me give you, we'll keep going. Here is here's some Pokédex entries. They live hidden under hot desert sands in order to keep their body temperatures from dropping. Nope. In Alola, I can't think of its name. I know what you're talking about, but I can't think of its name. Now. Alola, where it's warm all year round, is a comfortable environment for this Pokémon. Sometimes you'll even see it outside of deserts. Yeah, I, I'm not going to think of the name. Can you describe it, if you know what it is? Is it Grannish? Nope. Okay, then no, I don't know. It's Sandile! Sandile. Sandile. <laughs> the Sand Crocodile. Oh, yeah. He evolves... He evolves into Crocorock at 29, and Crocodile at level 40. It's a cool Pokemon overall. We've been getting cool ones. We've been getting lucky for these first few episodes of, of the show. I'm waiting for us to get a really bad one. Because there are some really bad ones. But Sandale's pretty neat. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of appearances in the anime. Uh, I mean, he shows up like in the background and shit plenty. But he doesn't have like a major appearance outside of an episode called Sunglasses Sandile. Uh, Wes, have you ever caught a Sandile? Yes, but it's been a long time. Mm-hmm. What do we think about it, honestly? It doesn't really stick in my head as a very useful Pokemon. Uh, yeah, I don't think the typing is particularly useful. Um, I think it could be a... There's certainly more useful dual-type Pokemon, for sure. But from a cool factor, I think it's cool. It's kind of dinosaurian looking, especially when it evolves all the way. And, you know, I like them dinosaurs. But uh -huh. the shiny's not horrible. It's like a more yellowish or goldish color. I remember evolving one way back when. When the, whatever game it was that they came out, honestly, I, I can't even remember. That might be Sun and Moon? What, Generation 5? God, no. Yeah. No, Gen, Gen 5 was black and white. It has been a minute. It has been a minute. Well, let's see. Let's see, that dual typing. Uh, it's not bad. It is resistant to poison, rock, ghost, and dark. It's immune to electric and psychic. Uh, so that's actually kind of useful. But man, is it weak to a lot of things. Fighting, bug, water, grass, ice, and fairy. That's a bunch. 
That is a bunch. But, yeah, it's just kind of one of those nondescript, like, decent, middle-of-the-road Pokemon that it's not the wrong choice, but there's better guys hanging around. Would you put Sandile in your party if you caught one, Wes? And yes, it was in Sandile. Yeah, that's what I said. I said it was in Alola. Well, you, I even read the yeah, Pokedex said, entry. Yeah, but you just told me it wasn't a generation. Well, no, that's not I when like, it, I was saying that's not when it was introduced. It was introduced in black and white. And then it's a, and then it appeared in Alola and I think another game or two. I've only got it in Sun and Moon. Hmm. Well, it says here no other Pokemon have the same type combination as Sandow. That's interesting. That's kind of surprising, actually, because, you know, 800 plus Pokemon. I'm surprised there's not more coverage as far as dual typing goes. Wes, I don't think this one's yes. worth ruining. There's not much to ruin, really. Don't go near the water. It'll bite your toes. It's all, I mean, it conceals itself in sand. So, I mean. Oh, right. It's not an actual crocodile. Yeah. So don't go near the beach or the sand. Yeah, this one's a sand one. That's, sand dial. Yeah, yep. So, no, nope, I'm an idiot. Sand. I fully acknowledge my stupidity. <laughs> so, I mean, it, that could, so you'd have to stay away from beaches. Try not to sand have boxes. your plane crash in the desert, you know. Mm-hmm. Fun stuff, Wes. We only got one more thing to do, and we're going to play a little game. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hey, we're going to play Poke Draft. We're going to draft some Pokemon, Wes. I hope you yep. I hope you got your list ready. In this uh, for this first edition, um this this episode's coming out on New Year's. By the way, happy New Year's everybody. Woo hoo. Something or another. Top 5 Pokemon to party with, Wes. Pick a number between one and four, and if you get close to it, you get the first pick in the draft. Two. Oh, you dick. That's exactly what I was thinking of. All right, Wes, you get the first pick of the draft. Pokemon that are best to party with. Oh. Wes, did you, did, did you hear my sound effect? Yeah, I heard your sound effect. It's very... And the pick is in. <laughs> I guess it's it's New Year, so the 2019 Pokey Draft. Wes, who's your who you got number one overall? Um, I'm probably gonna go with Meowtastic. Meow Meowstic? Yeah, Meowstic. You picked my favorite Pokemon of all time. Did I really? Yeah, you did. What's what's the reasoning for that? I, I would think he would be an attention getter. Uh, he, he would bring a lot of attention to himself. I played so much with Meowstic that it just, I don't know why, it just became my powerhouse. Like, I love that thing. I had a female, though. Um, but yeah, Meowstic wasn't on my list, so luckily you didn't poach any of my talent. Yet. Yet. But it's coming. And the pick is in. My number one is Porygon. I'm going with Porygon because I feel like if you really want to party, you need to get that rave on, and Porygon's the one to go to. You're just going to seizure out. He's going to got all the disco lighting. He's going to be able to go into your electronics and just go bananas and berserk. It's going to be a wild time with Porygon. Wes. This is not getting old. You go, number two. I'm probably gonna go with uh, you know the 
An Al- Alakazam, maybe. Yeah. Oh no! J- just because I mean, he 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 would provide you know some shock factor. No, Wes, that was my number two. <laughs> I said, there's no way he's going to take, no, he's not even going to think of Alakazam. Like, I was, you know, because he's perfect. He's got the spoons. So, I mean, he can do party favors or party favors, party party tricks, tricks, you know, totally on board with Alakazam. I'm going to, I'm going to have to go to an alternate for mine. I'm going with Golurk. 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 Yes. He is a ghost and ground Pokemon. He looks awesome. He's like a big golem guy. He knows fly. He's sweet. Um, but mostly, you know, his main reason for existence is to protect people. So he's going to be my bouncer at my party. Safety is numero uno. So Safety I, is numero uno. That's right. So he's my bouncer Pokemon. He's checking people at the door. He's kicking, you know, rough and rowdy people out. And, you know, if we need a DD, he can fly you home. So, number two, overall pick, Golic. Gone. Wes, three. Uh, probably going to go with a, a Sil- uh, was it Sa- Savion? Sylveon? Oh, yeah, the, Sylveon. the, is that the psychic evolution of Eevee? Yes. And what's the reason for that? Because, you know, I mean, he, he, he would grab attention, or she would grab attention. And they basically could tell how someone's feeling by touch. Okay. So, you know, if someone's not feeling you, it's going to let you know. All right. I don't know about that. You've gone, like, three psychic Pokemon in a row. Yes. You get, catch a trend here, don't you? Mm-hmm. I think psychic Pokemon have... They're, they're party starters, party getters. You think so? I would think that's... A little more mischief, mischievousnessness would be a little better, personally. But the psychic Pokemon don't they just know everything anyway? Like people digging around in my mind, that's not fun. You get drunk and let loose, and then all of a sudden, and, and the Sylveon and knows my that, deepest, that, darkest that secrets. That one's a fairy Pokemon, to be fair. So. Oh, my bad. My bad. But still, it's pretty close. You're very much like the guy peacocking at the club like you got all these attention grabbing pokemon you're like hey look at me babes Sw- swinging in and stealing my game distract, distract him yeah 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 totally totally just cutting in on my game Wes. what the fuck <laughs> Wes, uh what number are we on that was my third so you should okay, be on your number third. three three i'm going with ditto Ditto. Ditto. Yeah, that's Ditto. A little, that's, a little, that's a little cheaty. No, 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 no. I'm going with Ditto. He's the ultimate utility Pokemon. He can turn into anybody. You know, if you know you lose the beer pong, he can become a beer pong ball, a ping, ping pong ball. You know, whatever. Yeah. If someone needs a knife to cut a cake and we got we don't got one, Ditto's got it. You know, if we someone wants to pass out and we need a soft spot to sleep, you know, he's kind of a jelly roll guy you just sleep on it sleep on him whatever ditto yup that's my answer okay number four well I guess my number four is probably gonna have to be the chancy really and why because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna want to deal with the hangover and I'm sure the chancy can cure my hangover okay nurse you back to health yeah. This list is really about, like, who to party with, not who to, like... I, yeah, I, mean, all right. I mean, it's your list. Yeah, I mean, well, you got you got after party, too. And... Wes, you're not invited to my Porygon party. Okay. You'll just take all of the attention away from me. I need the attention, Wes. Speaking of Porygon, with all that Raven and the, those crazy lights going everywhere, and I'm going to go with Noivern. Noivern. Because he can blast, like, sonic waves from his fucking face, and he's going to be my tunes guy. Like, he's just going to be blasting just heavy metal and J-pop. It's going to be, you know, he's my music guy. He's going to get, he's my party starter, right? So I got Porygon working the lights. 
I got Golurk working the the door. I got Noivern manning the uh, the tunes. He's like my DJ, DJ Noivern in the house. Then I got Ditto, who's just kind of like my utility guy. You know, he's the guy just doing shit. So, Noivern. I could have also said Exploud, but Noivern's approximately 500 million times cooler than Exploud. So, yeah. <laughs> Last pick in the Poke Draft. This is edition of the Poke Draft. I can't talk. Wes, who do you got? And then for the party that just won't stop and you want it to stop, you got to end the party somehow. And uh-huh. I think Guzzlord would end the party. Guzzlord? Yes, Guzzlord. Which one is Guzzlord? I don't even I don't even recognize it. Is that, is that uh, the Alolan Ultra Beast guy? Yeah, he is an Ultra Beast. And... He can consume everything. So he would do your cleanup and everything. He would end that party. Okay. So you, you basically got a bunch of attention getters. You got one guy that's good at party tricks and stuff. You got yeah. someone to help you with the, the kick everybody out, and then you got somebody to nurse you back to health so you can do it all over again. Pretty so my rationale was creating a party yours is mainly attending party like the best po- you're okay i see how we tackled this differently you're going to parties with these pokemon and party and and they're helping you in your partiness whereas my pokemon are helping me start actual parties like mine are very much yes. basic equipment for run for hosting an actual party that's where i went with it yeah that's not where i went no you are attending the party and i'm throwing the party well, only so many people can host that party. <laughs> yeah. Not bad. Not bad. My number five is going to be Machoke. Machoke. That's right. He's going to be the broest of bros. He's going to high five you. He's the guy that's going to do some killer keg stands. He might drink a little too much, wear a lampshade on his head, that sort of deal. You need a table moved, he can, he's your man. Yeah, I got a lot of people to help me start the party. Machoke is the party. So, there you go, Machoke. Guys, we did it. That is... That is your, your 2019 first edition of the Pokey Draft. That's enough of that.